I'm gonna teach you how not to foul in the glide shot, the rotational shot, and that third aspect with the discus, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so first, right off the bat, we're gonna go into the glide. And what are the most typical tendencies that we see with especially high school athletes and how they foul in the glide? Typically, they will come out of the back of the circle, they'll land in the middle, we'll be open with that left shoulder, our weight shifts into our left, we pick up our right early, and we blast out that left corner of the throw. This is almost always what happens. Sometimes we will see some people hit the toe board and they just fall forward. Okay, so what can we do to fix that? The first key factor is to establish that technical model. So we have to understand where do we want our right foot to ground in the middle? Where do we want our left foot to ground in the middle? Okay, we wanna draw a line between the back and the center part of this circle. And then also, what do we wanna do at the front? We wanna keep that right foot grounded Okay, we wanna open that left arm, keep that right foot grounded as long as possible, transition forward, and then hang on to the toe board for that reverse. Understand the technical model. We go deep into the glide technical model in other videos, so you can check that out, and then you can come back into this video. The second key is gonna be taking non-reverse throws. Okay, if you take non-reverse throws, you can do it in a fashion like this, where you can go six to eight non-reverse throws, stepping forward. And you can do it in this fashion. You can go six to eight non-reverse throws, gliding, landing, hitting it, step forward inside the toe board. That's the first aspect of a non-reverse. The second aspect, you could go six to 12 of these. Hit it, punch, step forward. So that's the second aspect of those non-reverse throws. Now the third key aspect is going to be taking all those pieces, the technical model, those two different non-reverse throws, and now piecing it together with a glide reverse drill. So we can do a glide reverse drill here on the toe board, practicing to hit our heel, bring our left foot back to the center. Hit our heel, left foot back to center. And a lot of kids don't wanna do that because they fall over, they blast out of it, but then they don't ever fix their reversing problem or their fouling problem. But if you just do this 15, to 20 times a day. You can fix your fouling problem for the glide. So we've got to focus on establishing that technical model, hitting those two different types of non-reverses, and then lighting up those glide reverse drills and then transitioning from that glide reverse drill into an actual reverse. So that's how we can fix that problem very, very quickly with that glide technique. Now the second aspect, we're going into the rotational technique of the shot put. There's gonna be a couple different factors around fouling. Most likely, we will over rotate out of the back, okay, here. We'll land really deep in the bucket. We'll throw, spin around, foul. <laughs> so we typically will see that very, very consistently. Another thing that we'll see is the athlete will also come forward and they don't reverse back into the circle with that left leg. Okay, that's a pretty standard thing that happens as well. Or we'll even see a lot of athletes and even professional level athletes reverse where they'll get their heel caught up on that toe board. So the first aspect goes back to the glide. Establish that technical model. If we're over rotating, if we're getting in the bucket, we don't have a good concept of what our technique needs to be. And that's where we can just start with wide around the left, okay? The right grounds early before that line that you could have drawn, okay? Left around the right. Now we're at the front, right around the left. Understand simple movement pattern, okay? Just keep it as simple as possible. Make sure you're grounding very early with that right leg. That's a really, really key concept. Second aspect, if you wanna fix your fouls, is that we can actually take slow throws, okay? And I'm gonna pair these last two together. Slow throws in the spin are key. I really like non-reverses, I really like half turns, but slow throws with a reverse get you more confidence quicker. And it's gonna be paired with that third aspect. The third aspect on the reverse is that I wanna see our right foot reverse almost to the middle of the board. A little off to the left, but almost to the middle of the board, and I wanna see that heel down. I don't wanna see that with the heel high, I wanna see that heel down. If that heel comes down, 
we're gonna stay grounded on the finish. If the heel's going up, we're extending too much and we're losing that rotation. So the slow throws will look like 50 to 60%. Just nice, easy, boom, boom, hit, rotate. And you just control that tempo. And you can take eight to 10 slow throws. Nice and easy, try to warm up, try to feel those positions, try to feel that proper reverse. And then that third aspect is you can take that slow throw with the technical model concept, push your right heel down. Think about that left leg coming back around. Push the right heel down, boom, here on the finish, heel down. That's gonna help me stay grounded, that's gonna help my hip rotate, it's gonna help my knee rotate here, and even that ankle kick out, then it comes down. Watch Ryan Krause's right heel when he reverses. Okay, so you can take those, you can build those slow throws, and then you can use that new technique with that right heel down to help improve that reverse. And then in training, you can set up to have a mock meet where you wanna save a couple different factors, you wanna save a couple different throws. And that first key throw in that competition is taken at 80%. So when you're warming up, you do the slow throws, maybe you dial it up a little bit, and then that first throw in that competition with the rotational technique should be done at 80%. Now, let's go to the discus circles for where you can fix your fouls in the discus. So when we're looking at the discus, typically the fouls will come down to what is your body doing and what is the discus doing? A lot of throwers will peg the right side, if they're a right-handed thrower, the right side of the cage. And that's gonna be related to different movement patterns in the circle. And a lot of throwers will also fall the same way they do in the rotation. So they'll fall out the rotational shot technique. They'll fall out of that left side. So really what we need to do is first go back to establishing your technical model. So we wanna think about keeping the discus back balanced out of the back position here, okay? Right sweeps around the left. We wanna be balanced in the middle, balanced in the middle, left sweeps around the right. Now we wanna be balanced on the finish. Balance, 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 on the finish. Step through on that reverse. Now the first key is that after we establish that technical model, now we have to go into non-reverse Fulls. And I really, really, really think that in the discus, if you actually put a target, you cut the circle in half, put a circle where you need your right foot to land, put a circle where you need that left foot to land, and go about 60 to 70%. That's where we wanna be balanced, okay? That's the position of balance. That's the balance point. And if you hit a non-reverse, I actually believe a lot of high school kids benefit from targeting where you have something in the middle of the sector and we want to see the discus get to the middle of the sector. Where our feet will ground, and then we have where we want to release to get our discus to the center of the sector. What that does is it sort of subliminally focuses the athlete on not cranking out of the back of the circle, but actually going nice and easy, ground here, ground here, target to the center, non-reverse. Now, if you're a coach, Make sure you lose your mind on the athletes when you're doing these non-reverses if they're blasting out of the front. They need to be under control and just hit here and line up forward. I even recommend just saying, hey, throw the discus 40, 50 feet down the center. Just show me that you are capable of doing that. So the first key aspect is establish that technical model. The second key aspect is doing those non-reverses based off the technical model with targeted throws. And then that third key aspect is that understand how the freaking discus comes off your hand. If we look at holding the discus here with the outside edge down. So we want to release with that outside edge down and we want to rotate to the center of the sector. Now, the discus will not be flying with the outside edge up, it'll be flying with the outside edge down. Then what happens is if you have a decent wind, it can actually help lift the discus a little bit. But we need to get to that front position based off the technical model, using non-reverses, and then having that outside edge down so that we're able to release it accordingly. Those are really, really key concepts. Now, when you're in training, you can take those standing throws, focus on releasing the outside edge down, coming off your index finger, okay? Then the next step, take those slow non-reverses that are targeted, 40 to 50 feet, dead center. Then the next step, now you can go into full throws, nice and easy, 
focusing on the outside edge being down. And then finally, you take training throws at higher intensity where you're not allowed to foul in a circle. You're trying to implement and carry those movement patterns through and you're still releasing the discus with the outside edge down. When throwers think about that end result, oftentimes, especially at the lower level in, in high school and in middle school, if they think of the end result, they will actually fix things from the beginning. As they get more and more advanced, we need to fix the front in the beginning of the throw. But when they're younger, we can do it the opposite. So we've got to think that way through when we're training athletes that are in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, that's going to be a different model or a different approach than when we're training those post-collegiate or collegiate athletes. So just keep that in mind as a coach, that when you're training athletes of all different ages, there's different approaches and different targets. Again, I'm gonna rehash that. Young novice throwers benefit from fixing the front by actually fixing the front of the circle. Elite levels, you've gotta fix the back to fix the front. So just keep that in mind. Use all these tips so that you can help your athletes, help your throwers improve and not foul everything in training. Have those mock meets, have those cues, have those rituals, and understand as well, if you do have a bad meet, it doesn't define who you are as an individual. Use all these cues so that you can drop some bombs. If you want help with your overall training, head over to throwsuniversity.com. You can pick up a training program or a technical analysis, and that's probably what you really need to help you stop fouling. And remember, implement all of these cues today so that you can drop some bombs. Until next time, peace.